everyone. Welcome back to Joyce's World. This is episode two of Deep Dive. Today, I'd like to talk to you about memorization and what I do just a few days before the performance to make sure my memory is secure. I think it's important to run through the piece in the practice room as if you're performing. I think that's important in a practice room in general, not just uh, repeat the motions and zone out thinking about what you're gonna make for dinner and then slowly get better at playing that piece but really focus and think about what's going on think about every single move that you're making and think about what message you're going to say to the audience through your music I think um, one of the methods that um, I follow in order to get ready is to play my right hand things with my left hand and left hand things with my right hand um, because it's after working on it for so long and repeating the passage over and over thousands of times um, sometimes I my hands just seem to have muscle memory I know they don't have brains but it's sort of like you got into your car you weren't um, thinking about anything and suddenly you were home and you sort of just drove yourself home. If you do it so many times, you're just gonna go the route that um, your muscle tells you to do. And this method is really to break away from um, what is comfortable and what you're used to doing because you're gonna feel really out of place on stage. For example, in this um, Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto, there's a passage at the end of the cadenza that goes like this. <laughs> flat's really out of tune. Um, a passage like this always seems to worry me on stage because um, there's a lot going on and um, you're all alone during the cadenza without the orchestra and um, in order to prepare myself for this kind of passage instead of playing left hand right hand rotating I sort of just go through it slowly with the left hand alone so on. It's very difficult because I'm not used to um, just playing it all with one hand and uh, I keep thinking about what comes next in the right hand but left hand and right hand they're a mirror image of each other and so fingering is completely different and it just throws you off and you really have to know what the intervals are in order for you to play all the right notes. So places like that I would really try to reverse hands and see if I really know it um, up here. Next thing I do um, is, I usually have to travel to play a concert, so on the plane, um, I try to really put my sound canceling system um, on and really go through uh, the, the music from very beginning to very end um, and think about every single note and envision my hands in my head without moving my hands. If you do this, it's somehow easier to remember what comes next. But if your hands are not moving, then you really have to rely on your pure memory to uh, know what comes next. So sometimes I like to do that for the entire piece very, very slowly and make sure I know every single note that's um, in the score. Sometimes I fall asleep on the plane doing that and I end up doing the first movement over and over and I never get to the end. But at least before the concert, just once, I like to really go through it and and if I can't remember anything, go back to the music and look it up. One thing I do uh, a week or two before the concert that's I think a little bit unusual uh, is do a little memory game um, with myself. I came up with this idea a couple of years ago when I was going to Sydney, Australia to play the Liszt B minor sonata. I just learned it and I was um, scared to death to play it um, all over Australia, even though I worked on it so hard uh, and really tried to get every little bit memorized and you know, create this journey that I'm going to uh, reveal for the, my Australian audience. But um, I was still very much worried and I was uh, thinking I better work on this while I'm on, sitting on this 16 hour flight to Australia. So I ended up, uh, Xeroxing my score and cutting the score with a scissor into one or two measure bits 
and I would sit on the plane with a rock and roll keyboard that sort of rolls into a little, and as you can see, it's on. <laughs> so you can play it, you can put your headphone to it, and um, you can put it on your table as you travel and uh, kind of figure out little things. Um, of course, everyone passing by um, start to ask me questions on what it is, but um, it was a way for me to spend time smartly um, while I was traveling because God knows I couldn't relax for 16 hours. So um, when I did this, I started to freak out because it was really hard to remember what um, where these little passages belonged in the score. Uh, and I, I kept doing it for hours and hours and hours and it got a little bit easier and I did it a few more times after I landed in the hotel room. Uh, I don't sleep well leading up to the concert. So this was a good way to pass time and feel like you can practice when there's no piano around. This was a, a really good proven method for me to learn the piece um, truly, truly well before the concert. Because what happens is um, when you're playing a performance, any number of things could throw you off. It could even be a little bit of um, someone coughing in the audience and, and you sort of come out of your concentration zone and, and you ask yourself, what am I doing? Where am I? What piece is this? Oh my gosh, I'm on stage and all these sometimes weird thoughts end up happening in your mind and and you just go ah and freeze in front of the piano. And in those moments, you have to uh, look at where your hands are and then weave your story out of that moment and get back in the performance. I have exactly what I do with certain um, pieces. I cut out the score uh, to the cadenza and I cut it into a measure or two measures. I've played this piece so many times, recorded it and it's been with me for a really long time so I think I should know it well but I tell you these exercises make it really difficult for you to um, uh, really do it well. So let's try a couple of, uh, couple of these things for the memory game. So this is what the little piece of paper looks like. Let's get rid of the, the answers, the cheat sheets. And so this little bit goes like this. That's all I see. So I know it's from the Tchaikovsky cadenza, but where is it? So when I see this, the exercises, I need to uh, be able to, you know, keep playing from this moment. In my mind, Tchaikovsky cadenza has four sections. So I know this is um, part of section two, um, where this melody, the thematic material from earlier comes back. So this was just sort of when I stopped playing. I think it's important to not only play from all the way back, but play just a couple of measures before this little tidbit to know um, where it is. It's sort of like you're doing a puzzle and if you know a thousand piece puzzle really well, just by that one, uh, one piece, you know that that is uh, shoulder of the little man standing next to the tree. You know, it's like you, you can really pinpoint it and knowing where it is in, uh, in that kind of context, I think, helps you a great deal. So that's one. Let's do one more. Is the passage the 
This is a part of a very gnarly passage of the cadenza where many things can go wrong. Um, it's at the height of virtuosic difficulty. So let's try to play what comes after. <laughs> So this is a little bridge that I need to really nail in order to get to that um, big chord at the end, which is a, a very important part of the cadenza. Uh, I think the next step is to remember what comes before. So this says, I know this is a sequence um, and this is not the beginning, so I have to remember what starts the sequence and it's, it's a step down. does this accomplish? Uh, by doing this, I learned exactly where this goes. I know it was the second of the sequence, not the first. I knew that, but it's good to uh, know it out of context in case something strange happens and um, you have a clearer image of what's happening in the score so you never really fall off uh, the wagon. So before I play a piece for the first time, I like to do this process with uh, every single measure of the piece, so you can see what kind of headache I had to go through for Lisp B minor. Uh, it's, it's just a one huge journey over 35 minutes of music, and um, it would take me days to get through it just once. Just having that security, uh, that lifeline, of knowing where everything is in case something strange happens in the concert is a huge aid to calming down and being able to play your best once you get on stage. So I hope this process helped you and uh, maybe you will try this technique and find yourself a little bit less nervous next time you go on stage. It definitely works uh, for me and uh, it's, it's a foolproof way of really getting to know the piece. So thank you for joining me and see you next time on Deep Dive.